What is going on everybody, Themster here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to buy a used gaming PC or any other computer and get a good deal. So first of all we have to figure out our budget and how much money we can actually spend for this computer. So for this video example I will say $1000. So now we will go around on the local classified websites like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or any other website and we will look for computers in our price range. So. After you find a computer that suits your uh, budget and your needs, we will take note of the price. So as I said, for this example, we will use $1,000. So you can always uh, actually try to negotiate the price down as well, but let's say $1,000 right now. So if the computer costs $1,000, I would suggest you to go on a website like uh, pcpartpicker.com. I will leave the link in the description and input those exact specs that you're trying to buy. So and this will give you a rough estimate of how much it should sell for new. So if the computer is $1,000 with all parts new, the seller can at most ask for 70% of the original price. So that will be $700, but uh, mo most of the time it's like 60%. So now that you know how much you can pay for a used PC, arrange a meeting with the seller, preferably in their house, so you can overall see the computer, how it was treated, because you know how a person lives, it tells you quite a lot about how the computer was treated as well. So, And also, before even taking a look at a computer, watch some reviews online of, uh, of all the specs, and or at least the GPU and CPU combination to make sure that the performance that you will be getting is reflected in the price and your needs. So the first thing you should do when you arrive at the seller's house is just take a quick look on the outside. Does it look taken care of, or is it just full of dust and all scratched up? If it is, you can make this a point of negotiation to get the price down, or even just not buy it, because it can have some issues. Then I would personally open up the case and check out all the components. Are they in good condition? No missing screws or physical damage? Is the RAM, motherboard, CPU cooler, and the most importantly, the power supply? good quality parts, not just some cheap junk that may or may not work one year from now. Or even worse, a bad power supply can even catch on fire, so we definitely do not want that. And this is because most of the time people get a good graphics card and a processor and they just cheap out on other parts like the motherboard or the RAM, but these parts are just as important to get a overall good experience with a computer. So I would suggest if your budget allows you to, Buy a, buy a quality build or at least get them for cheap. So if the seller didn't list it in the ad, ask them if some parts still have warranties or boxes because uh, later if you want to sell it, for some reason it is easier to sell a computer that has all the boxes of the parts. And if the computer looks good, then we can go into Windows. And what I do is I right click on the taskbar down here and I open up Task Manager. And this just gives me some more information uh, that the specs are the actual ones that the seller listed for. So, for example, if you listed a Ryzen 5 9600X and it shows up like a Ryzen 5 3600, then you should probably not buy it because this is most likely a scam. Then in the task manager, you can also see more things like the RAM speed, the amount of RAM, the graphics card, and the drives that it has. So just make sure that everything is as advertised. Now some advanced things that you can do to further test the PC. I usually bring a USB flash drive with me that has hardware info to check more of the computer's components, GPU-Z to check more about the graphics card, Cinebench R32 to stress test the processor and to see if it doesn't overheat or stop working under load, and Formark for testing the graphics card. So I will now show you how to set each one of these up on your USB flash drive. Okay, so now open up the browser of your choice and go to the first link in the description, which is hardware info. And right here, click on free download. Then right here, click on portable and uh, local. So now it's downloading. Then tech power up GPU Z, uh, the second link in the description and click on download. Then select whichever server is closest to you. I'll choose the UK and save. Okay, then go to uh, Cinebench R23 and the third link in the description and click this download mirror author click on this then you will wait five seconds and it will download and lastly go to uh, formark and scroll down a little bit and you will see this download button 
and then on Vormark 2 side, uh, click on Win64 Setup. Click on this. And yeah, so now uh, we will click on Download right here. Then click on Save. And yeah, it's saved right now. So now open up your Downloads folder and extract uh, the hardware info. Just right click on it and click on Extract All and Extract. So as you can see, it's extracted right now. And uh, we will select the, uh, so if you're buying a computer with an ARM processor, like a laptop, you will use this one. But for this video, we are using this on a desktop PC. So I will uh, hardware info 64 right now. So just uh, uh, copy it or just drag it. And uh, yeah, so go to your, mm, your flash drive, plug it in. Yeah, so now I just plugged in the USB flash drive right here, and uh, I will just uh, drop this in here. Okay, so hardware info is done. Uh, then go into GPU Z, and you don't need to extract this, just uh, drag and drop it into your flash drive. Okay, it's done. Uh, then we have to extract Cinebench, so extract all, extract. So just wait a little bit because it's a bigger size. Okay, so now it's done extracting. And uh, you will see this folders in the bench R23 and just drag and drop it into your flash drive. And once again, wait. Okay, so now we're done. And then lastly, we will uh, we will drag and drop a Formark installer. So just drag and drop it into the flash drive. And yeah, now we're done with our flash drive. Now with our USB flash drive, we can plug it into the computer that we want to buy. So open up hardware info and we can see pretty much everything that we need that we couldn't see before with only the task manager, like the temperatures, the motherboard. So right now only check out if the motherboard is the same as the advertise and keep hardware info open for the next step. So now we will run some stress tests and let's start with Cinebench R23. Open that up from the flash drive that we made earlier, and in here uh, click start where it says a CPU multicore. This test basically renders this image using all of the CPU threads. Also have hardware info as I said opened up uh, to uh, monitor the processor temperature while this test is running. The temperature should not exceed about 80 to 85 degrees Celsius, and will it will take about 10 minutes. In the meantime, you can ask the seller more questions like, why is he selling it? when did he build it or where he got it from and when the test is done you can uh, see the score and you can google the score of the CPU and make sure that it's about the same it can fluctuate a little bit like maybe a thousand score more or a thousand score less it's it's no big deal but you don't want to see an a really really lower score than expected like it. if you google the score should be 15,000 and if you see like 6,000 and it's probably not good. It, it means that there's something possibly wrong with this computer and you should probably reconsider buying it. Now after this test we will test the graphics card. So firstly open up a GPU Z and then you will have to install firmware on the computer. So uh, just ask the seller if it's okay. They should have no issues with that. And after you go through the installation process open up firmware. It should have created that desktop icon but if not just use the Windows search bar. And in here, the graphics card test should be for Mark GL and make sure to select the dedicated GPU. So for example, it should say RTX 3080 or RX 5700 just, and then click run. You will see the spinning ring. It's a stress test for the graphics card. And on the GPU, we will go to the monitoring section and we can see the temperatures are they as expected or hotter. The GPU temperature shouldn't exceed about 85 degrees Celsius. And the hotspot temperature can be about 10 degrees hotter, so don't worry about that. Also run this test for about 10 minutes and if everything looks good, it doesn't overheat, the screen doesn't go black or doesn't shut down, that, that means that it's probably good. If the computer successfully ran both of these tests and everything is as described as in the listing, then I would say that it's probably safe to buy. If you have more questions regarding buying a used computer, definitely leave a comment. I reply to all of my comments. Also, the PC that you saw in this video is going to be featured on my next video on how to flip PCs. So, 
subscribe to not miss that. And if this video helps you in any way, make sure to leave a like. Thanks for watching, guys.